Thank you for attending Worldwide Slot Car Chat number 62. I'm your host, Greg Gao. We've got Kelly, Leo, John, Martin, Alan, Dennis, Chris, Don, Jeremy, Big Den, Wayne, Petrucci, and multiple other people in the list of people without cameras. I will start off with some sad news. I, I learned just an hour ago that one of our local racers who's been in the local 132 racing scene for I have been, so I don't even know how long, but probably two or three times as long as I have been, has passed away from natural causes. His name was Dan Parsons. He went by Fester. Uh, so just imagine Uncle Fester, and that's what he looks like. And that was that was his that was his personality too. He was a very just kind of effect, efficacious. Kind of, he he just energized a room, always laughing, always joking, always goofing off uh he he had classic scholastic track for a while that that's when i first started racing and if you look at my old youtube videos for scums s-c-u-m-s i did a video scums stands for the slot car underground margarita social and there were margaritas there <laughs> and we all enjoyed racing and margaritas and shooting the shit he he then built a really nice uh, routed wood track with a with a corkscrew replica, which was probably the best routed wood corkscrew I've seen. Uh, that's that's also in one of my older videos. So if you if you look through my videos and, and just search corkscrew, you'll probably see that video from from the top looking down the corkscrew. Dan was a great guy. I haven't raced with him for several years. He's in a he's in a separate club than the one that I raced in, but I always enjoyed meeting him. He was a great guy to be around and. As with everybody in the area, we're sorry to see him no longer with us, but we will remember him fondly. That uh, being said, does anybody have any show and tell? I'll put Dennis on the spot. Okay, John, you go first, and then we'll make Dennis show off any pictures you might have from the Father's Day thing. Just one? Okay. <laughs> Whatever you got. Okay, go ahead, John. You go first. Okay, so, you know, we, we've had a conversation, uh, I guess, couple of uh, episodes ago about perhaps doing some sort of team project. Okay. I'm just gonna... Yes. Okay, go uh, ahead. Thank you. And I received in the mail today, believe it or not. All right. I'm gonna talk uh, to you. All the way from Scotland. Oh, it's an unboxing. Yay. It's an unboxing. But you, you should know what this is, I guess. I, I, and for, for our friends in Australia, I thought I'd bring a real knife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I that's, yeah, that's a knife. Okay, so let's just go through the bottom here, I guess. Here we go. Hmm. By the way, my, uh, <clears throat> my wife's standing by with the first aid kit. She knows me so well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the kid was going to be a surgeon. There we go. So this is from Leo. Thank you, Leo, who uh, is the uh, originator of this. And look how nicely packed. This is how you package something that comes all the way from, from Europe or the UK. OK. Sorry, there's no tartan. What's that? Sorry? Sorry, there's no tartan. Oh, no. <laughs> Put the packaging aside here. Oh, boy. It's amazing how the peanuts go all over the place. So here is, oh, this is the, um, this is the matchbox. So there's Front a slant nose, yeah. Yep. Okay, I mean, that's pretty that. close if not for the rear fenders, really. I don't mind this windscreen. Oh, no, that, that's, oh, and it's the multi, oh, wow, whoever glued this really made this for a, a slot car. It's got the, oh, it's got the dashboard, okay. There we go, so that's the front half. And of course, here is, what will be grafted upon it, the rear half. Love those fenders. You know what? This is going to work. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. How's the wheelbase match up? Uh, darn close. Darn close. But you know what? Um, all we really have to do is just some grafting, I think. Well, I went ahead and queued up the pictures of the car that we're representing. Let me know when you want to see those. Okay, cool. And um, the, the other thing I did too was because I, I found out this was a matchbox kit, I actually purloined a matchbox kit for the interior and any other parts we may need. Oh, nice. 
nice. Awesome. Okay, cool. I will unspotlight you and I will go ahead and share my screen just because. Uh, there's, more, there's more in the box. There's, oh, wait, there's more in the box. Keep going, John. Keep going. Let's see what else is in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Leo. Not much, for, not much for an unboxing video list. Oh, sorry, Leo. Oh, my goodness. There is. Oh, you brought wheels. Oh, fantastic. So, oh, sorry. It doesn't help if we can't see what you're doing. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Come oh. on. Lift it up. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, right. but okay. Like this. All right. Sorry. So sorry. Thank I'm so glad Leo was here because I would have discovered this later. My apologies. I'm so sorry. See, that's, that's why I ingested so much plastic as a youngster because I'd get to the bottom of the cereal box and the prize, I had like eaten it. So, you yeah. know. Oh my goodness, lovely, lovely wheels. Look at this. I think that's they exactly are, why they don't do that anymore, John. They did. Yeah, exactly. Them. Yeah. Well, the, the, the oh. funny part was for some reason I'd go to the bathroom and everyone would hear a whistle. I don't know why. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Wow, these are these are really nice wheels, Leo. Are I'm those? tired. They're, so are these who, who's uh, whose wheels and tires are these? They're really lovely. Yeah. Slot it, you muted me. Slot it. I think so. I don't know. Leo sent them. <laughs> yeah, slot it with slot it with BBS inserts. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, that's awesome. Is that what it, was that right, Leo? Slot it with. Yeah, I was going to say the racer, but of course racer use slotted components, don't they? So yeah. yeah. Those are really nice. That's awesome. Front ones, front ones are plastic, but the rear one, the rear ones are aluminium. Yeah, they, they, and these are aluminum. Yeah, absolutely. They're just lovely. Look at that. Holy cow. All right. I'll try close, and disappear. I think they're a close match for Greg's. Um... Well, let's find out. I've got the picture here is, well, here's the picture of the model. This is a 124th scale uh, Tamiya model kit that my friend put together and did the decals for and put a, uh, put a scale auto chassis under. And so, not the right wheels. Either, not the right wheels, think. no. Yeah, in this case, he he did what he had. Uh, this is the model kit should be here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so this is the actual model kit. So those are the wheels in the model kit. Uh huh. Yeah. There we go. Those. Yeah. The fronts work and the rears work. Although I guess the rear should be a little more dished. I can say they're a little mm. deep. Yeah. And why? We could probably work that out later. We can. Yeah, cut out the back of the insert and get it deeper into the wheel. Right, but the, the, the fronts are spot on, though. I've yep. got a quick show and tell in a minute, and then I'll show, I think you've actually got the right wheels for you. I'll show you in a moment. I mean, I'm uh, in this This is one of the see, I'm, I'm totally a fantasy livery guy. I love me a fantasy livery, but this is the one time, <laughs> the one time I want things to be pretty darn accurate to this because whatever, you know, that's what it is. Uh, oh, and there's yeah, I've got some Ninkos and stuff that that all that were never close. Uh, Any no. pictures of the real full size car then? Yep. Uh, I think I found one on Wikipedia at some point when I was researching why this car even exists that that nobody models other than this particular model kit. Uh, I don't have one easily accessible. Sorry. It's all right. Someone will find one. Someone will find one, I'm sure. You know, like I said, the, the reason I showed that picture was because on the last video, somebody was somebody sent me an email saying, "Oh, you know, there's here's a portion. You know, I took these pictures at Brands Hatch or you know whatever you took the pictures at of some some different one." And I'm like, "Yeah, those are really cool. Not the one that I'm looking for, but those are really cool." <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that project. Uh, Chris, did you have an opportunity to to watch last week's episode? Just before you do move on, I've got that pic. Oh, we're disabled. Must have lost Chris. Yeah, hold on. I I'll did. Talk. Okay. I did. Did you? How do you feel about being the the paint and decal guy, or would you prefer being the 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 chassis guy in this group project, or don't want to be part of the project? No, I don't. I don't mind either way. Okay. So Dennis seemed to be more confident in his chassis building than his 
paint and decaling. I would agree with that. <laughs> so I'll let. I'll That's let classic. Guy. <laughs> and again, I. I got That's what friends are for, right? There, there you go. That was a compliment. It was a compliment on your chassis building. Of course it was. We understood. Yeah. Okay. You know, with, with a back like, with a backhand like that, Chris, you should be on tour uh, playing tennis somewhere. That was a wonderful backhand. But yes, long-term project. Obviously, we've got plenty of time. You know, at 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 the artist's individual convenience. So once John is happy with his results, it'll go to the next guy. And when he's happy with his results, it'll go to the next guy. And everybody. And and, and, and I would like to sort of interject here for a minute because I. It, any help as far as where you would like your um, mounts for the chassis, uh, Dennis, whether you want them sort of, you know, on the sides or on the ends, that would really be helpful because I'll mold them right into the, right into the body. Uh, my, my preference always is not to have any posts of any description inside the body because I like to use a, a foam mount, some kind of foam glued into the sides of the body to mount the chassis onto. Uh, so that there's a little bit more give there, but um, I could work any way you like. No, no, no. It's good to know right off the top, and then we make it the way we need to make it. Yeah, if we're doing just one, then that's the way I would do it with no posts. And if you're going to make a mold that other people may want, then it might make sense to put a um, to put posts front and rear down the center line. I usually, uh, I usually put them on the side because that way you can actually block the mold. If you don't want them, want the mounts, it's a lot easier to block it to uh, for to for making different types of. Uh... Mm. Okay, uh, Chris may have something to say about that. Okay, yeah. What, what, Chris? Do you have anything to, to any comments or anything on, else? On what? On body posts? Yeah. No, no. Dennis is doing the chassis, so it that's that's B dictates where the body posts or lack thereof go. Cool. I, I'm with him. I prefer to take. If I was doing it, I would take a bare shell, build a chassis, and then and then put my mounts on. Okay. And then um, I'm also anticipating casting a full interior with a driver as well for you guys. Okay, that's fine. As long as we uh, just uh, the big deal is don't get the full interior too deep. Yeah. Give me, you know, if you can give me about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the sills up to the bottom of the interior. And along the sides, uh, we want to keep it, again, uh, if you could give me you know, like 10 millimeters each side from the, from the edge of the body in towards where the, the interior starts, that helps a lot. As far as my, my personal desires are concerned, I'm fine with a pan interior. He does not need a torso and legs. He just needs a, he just needs a head, shoulder, and arms. I'm fine with that. So, uh, you know. oh, no, you, you've got to mold him with, all the way down to his shoes because I love cutting the feet off drivers. <laughs> it's cutting off the feet. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's just, it gives me this perverse pleasure to cut the feet off a driver from a Scalextric or a Slotted or whatever because they're stuck way down under there and nobody can see them anyway. And I just get this kind of this thing when I take my snippers and snip the boots off. Wow, so you're, 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 the, you're, a, you're a treasure island slot racer. That's kind of cool. <laughs> either, either, that or, either that or a very sick man. <laughs> All of the above, I think. Yeah. I want to be a surgeon. Where the model is in the Toy Story, right? You can't put a digital chip in a car without chopping off some feet. So I've exactly. quite a few feet in my day as well. And there is there isn't a strange, funny feeling of chopping off a, a little plastic dude's feet. But I did want to uh, also ask uh, between the chassis builder and the, the paint and decal guy, sh who should get the body from John first? See, the chassis builder needs to get it first uh, because you want to do all the all that work and all the fitting and all the gluing of uh, mounts inside it and everything before you even get close to adding paint to it. Because otherwise it will be a mess. Because yeah. That's kind of what I figured. So so just helpful information for everybody else out there wondering what sequence of events would be optimum. So yeah, John will send it to you. You'll you'll send the combination over to 
Uh, Leo, you forgot the stickers? What are you doing? I got these afterwards, after I'd sent uh -huh. the, the, the body shells. So I've sent these to John. I've sent two sets of these to John. Um, and if they fit, great. But if not, then, yeah, hopefully Chris can improve the situation. Yeah, well, for what, standard. What, what, I'll get, I'll get some... when, when I get them, I'll hold on to them. So when um, uh, you know, Chris gets the car back, because we're relatively close to each other, we can save some postage fees. And I, can, you know, Chris might not, want, Chris may want me to hide it behind a bush somewhere because he doesn't like meeting face to face. But you know, other than that, I think it'll work well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I think Michael at IndyCals does some really nice uh, Porsche 935 decals as well. And his, his decals are really nice. So I will probably investigate that and go that route. Um, second thing is, what are you doing for, are you going to, Combine these two cars, John, and, and then make a resin molding out of it. What are you going to do? What are you doing for glass? Oh, well, hang on. There's actually glass here. That's one of the reasons I got another Matchbox uh, kit. It comes with the glass and everything else. So I'll, I'll mold that as well. Um, so you've got spare glass? I do, yeah. Not attached to a body? Correct. It's in okay. a model model okay. kit form. That's fine. That's fine. And uh, the thing about the Matchbox, sorry, I was going to say the thing about the Matchbox kit, though, Chris, is that it um, they're all individual panes. It's not like a uh, an assembly that just adheres to the roof. So they that's have to fine. be put in individually. Yeah, that's not a problem. Probably even better. So I assume as the test driver, pilot, I will get the car last. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hi. Unless the owner, I think Greg will get the car last. Chris will get better, really good pictures. Not if I'm the test pilot. As, as long as I can show off the really awesome pictures of the final thing after Chris is done with it. Yeah, I mean, no shelf queens, maybe. This go, this is going on the track, and there will be pictures to to uh, to preserve its beauty in in posterity. I think um, we should treat it like a proxy. <laughs> Send it to everybody first, and then Greg gets it last. Okay, just don't glue in the mirrors. That's the important part. I have a question for Leo, Greg, um, just, just around these decals that you just showed. Leo, um, where did you get these decals from? Are they actually copyrighted? The, the, the reason I asked um, is I, I was hoping in the next two or three weeks to do a, a quick demo of how the cricket works. Um, that's the cutting machine. It's, it's like a yeah. printer, but it cuts stuff up. Um, I haven't had a chance really to, to source any decals, but if somebody could send me some, um, I could then try Prepare with cricket just to see how good a job it does. It does not do it, cutting up some some re real decals. But I don't know what you've got. They're copyrighted, and you bought them off somebody else. Or I got them from eBay from the seller, Kevin Oz, Kevin oh, Osborne. Kevin. I've heard of Kevin Oz. Yeah, Kevin Oz, and they were they were cheap. They were four pounds a set, so no problem. They come pre-cut. Sorry. Did they come pre-cut, or did you cut them out yourself? With no, the they need to be trimmed around the pattern. Okay. And they'll be water slide too, right? And yeah. not stick on, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can. We can cut water slides. Yeah, that, 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 that's not a problem. Um, I just need some some decals that might be of use. So I might I might have a look at that, and I might just just pull some yeah. other ones out. If anyone has any suggestions, and, and is in the UK, that I can send them to once it's done. Um, please um post on the chat or drop me a PM at Portals 999 on Swap Forum International. Uh, I'd be happy to, to have a go at doing them for you. I just, I just had a quick look and IndyCals does a 1976 Porsche 935 from Jack Yix in Martini livery. So we're all in good shape. Awesome. Well, I can confirm that those wheels look absolutely correct. They are a very, very spoky pattern and the insert, although in some cases it appears to be silver, in most cases, it's actually gold, like the ones that John held up. Yeah, those that's, are that's, that's that's basic that's compared BBS, to the full size. BBS. Can I, just, can, can I just interject and say that if the G7 was this efficient, we would have no issues with our <laughs> present world. Could be possible. Um, at Gordon Portals, um, I need decals for this. You might recognize it. Hopefully, you recognize it as it being like America. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, front, it's, but the back's a bit different. It's a Formula One medical car, so ah, it's a okay. car, the yeah, station wagon right. version of the um, the Mercedes. So I need decals in white 
for this or stickers even. So I've done a bit of work with it. So I'll, I'll get in touch with you through the forum. Right, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing that on a show and tell in the future. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming, Greg, that uh, you want like the Jackie X version on this. Uh, I want the I want the the main things are the appropriate uh, body shape. Okay. Uh, let me show this show this picture again. Hold on. Commonly out there in number one, number four, and number five. Thank you, Wayne. And the number four, the number four, Martini Racing livery as shown. Slant nose, round rear fenders, big wing. That's that, those are my top requirements. Yeah, that, that's, Jack, that that's Jackie's, Jackie's car. car. That's Jackie's car. Yeah. Jackie's car. Okay. So yes. <laughs> well, Jackie, Jackie and Yoke and Mass. The the little right. chassis picture up on the on the top right is Yoke and Mass, and Jackie X is driving it. Yeah, I, I'd rather have X in the car though. Yep. Yeah, you can make the driver look like me as far as I care, but it's the it's the car that matters. <laughs> to me. Uh, the, the, Great. The now, now, now we gotta have a beard coming out of your balaclava and helmet. You know, whatever. It like you know, this is I, I'm kind of understanding uh livery purists in this specific instance, because to me, a livery purist is is the guy who's who sees a car that raced, but in a livery that either never existed or or it's not accurate or whatever, and they're like, ah, this is ridiculous, right? The reason they have that opinion, generally, I think is fairly safe to say, is because they saw that car race, or they, they were there, they watched the races on TV, whatever the case may be, to them, that, that car is a representation of a thing in reality, and to to, to diverge from that reality is an insult to the original. I had not, I don't have that personal affinity for pretty much any race car, but I do have that affinity for this particular race car because my exposure to it was through Transformers, you know, Autobots, that's jazz for anybody who doesn't know. Whatever reason they chose that particular livery and body shape to rep to be a toy that was my exposure so to me that car in an inaccurate body shape and an inaccurate livery to jazz is an insult to jazz <laughs> right so i get it i totally get it uh so this is me being the being the livery purist but this is like the only time there are there are a few other instances of course only ones who were represented as transformers. There's the there's the Gitanes, um, Formula One, uh, twenty number twenty six. Yeah. I forget the name of the 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 Brabram or something like that. I forget the name of the body. That was a transformer named Mirage. You know, there's a red Lamborghini Countach uh, Turbo that was, you know, side swipe. You know, I could go down the list of all because. Because the toys that originated Transformers were actually Japanese toys that turned from uh, cars to robots and had had human had human operators of the of the robots, and then these were turned into sentient robot beings in the Transformers universe. So there are there's like a dozen legit, you know, race cars or road cars that were turned into these Transformers characters that I have. I have a personal affinity and nostalgic connection to those are the ones that I have uh, livery <laughs> bias for. Everything else, blue and yellow, and I'm happy camper. <laughs> so on that note, I think we're done talking about Greg's favorite car. Does anybody else have any show and tell? Dennis, do you have any pictures from Sunday that you want to show? Alan, we'll get to you in a moment. I do, and I can show them to you. Wonderful. So this is uh pictures from the father's day swap me racing correct reopen. grand grand reopening and i'll talk a little while you unlock me so that i can oh, share my screen. Share screen um yeah uh, electric dreams has been basically closed to walk in traffic because of the COVID thing and uh it, it 
hit us right at the time that we put in that new six-lane routed track. Uh, and over the, over the period of the COVID thing, we've been doing a lot of upgrades to the store, uh, just to the look of it, the way that things are displayed, etc. Uh, and so they decided to have this big grand reopening, uh, decided to put it on Father's Day, which I thought was a little weird. But uh, as it turned out, it worked out very, very well. Uh, we had a number of guys come out uh, to sell stuff at various tables. And we probably had in excess of three to 400 people uh, through that place during the day. It was just amazing. I'm going to show you a bunch of the, uh, just, just a bunch of photos. Um, can you see that? All right, this was the table that uh, Electric Dreams themselves had um, of uh, used cars, collector, uh, stuff that they bought in collections, et cetera. It was this big four by eight table uh, that normally carries, a, you know, we have a number of these little tables that we use for layouts. And uh, so they had all of that stuff out there. Uh, this is a general look of the store. Wow. The, the front end of the store, right? And it this was actually not that crowded at that point. Later in the day, it was more crowded. But from these guys standing at the counter here, there was a time where the line, because they were doing some retail sales as well. This is uh, Lucas and Kristen behind the counter. Uh, they were doing retail sales. And the line to get there stretched all the way back to the to the single door past Herbie there in the corner. And around the track, there were at times like four deep waiting to, to drive. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and then there's just a bunch of guys, you know, different styles of guys. Uh, this was this actually is quite an interesting shot because uh, we had Professor Motor uh, uh, hand, uh, shop controllers, store controllers on each lane, and we had a lot of handout, car, uh, a lot of rent, um, you know, loaner cars. We used some of the slotted Toyota, uh, the Subaru BRZs. Uh, we we upgraded some of those, and we colored, we painted them on the lane, all the lane colors, and we let the guys use those. And most people race those, right? But this guy on the left here, right, of the picture, look at him with his, his oh, yeah. Falco controller with about a dozen knobs on it. And on the track, uh, this would be his car right right here on the black lane. Uh, all the stuff that he bought during the day, he was out there riding. And the guy was serious. I mean, you could see by his body language. He was, he was in there and he was really having a good go. So uh, there we had everybody from those kind of people to these kind of people. Uh, Getting his name on the track record board. Yeah. Uh, all these guys. Uh, and then mm -hmm. um, the Electric Dreams uh, table was right here. My tables were next, just uh, on the way out the door. And then outside, we had these little tents set up with a lot of tables there and people who were, who were selling out there as well. Those are the rental cars. Um, and then this was this was outside we had the the paul walker uh fast and furious uh yanko camaro there which now belongs to the uh to scott bader who owns electric dreams and the museum uh, these are some of the tables that were out there uh you know people talking about things <clears throat> This was part of the, the stuff that I was selling. Uh, these are all of Jay Henry's um, hard body uh, scratch built cars that he, uh, that he had left in his collection. Um, this <coughs> outside under a tent, we had a, a, a four lane Carrera digital 124th tri-oval. The only tri-oval I've ever seen that ran clockwise, but it ran clockwise. Um, but uh, there were a lot of people out there uh, trying it out and running it. Um, you know, so that, that helped a lot. Uh, we had uh, 
we had a, a, a little a trailer out there giving free coffee. We had a food truck there, an Italian food right, truck, stop, so you could get. Hold on for a sec, Dennis. That dude has appeared in a couple other pictures, and I recognize his face and his hair, but I can't put his name into my brain. Okay, this guy. Yeah. yeah. That is Stephen Farr Jones. Okay. The guy who is the the benevolent dictator. Uh, um, Initiator, founder of the Far Out Slot Car Club. Okay. Uh, he's a, a, believe it or not, a Denmark-born Australian who lives in Southern California, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and uh, a, a really nice guy. Uh, another marketing expert. Uh, you know, he does a lot of uh, digital marketing and things like that as his business. Uh, good guy. He did a video or two for uh, Electric Dreams as well. Correct. Yes, he did the he did the NSR Formula One video. Okay. Was he instrumental in that Carrera Trioval, or was was that a different? Nothing. No, nothing to do with him. The Trioval is actually a little uh, business that this guy and his wife uh, uh, own, and they take it around. They have a they have a, a, a toy hauler a trailer that they pack everything into. It's all custom made and they take this around to parties and, and so on. I don't know who they are. I actually didn't get much chance to, to talk to them. I would, but I can find out if people are interested. Oh, next time. Yeah. Uh, the, this is Stephen. That's Amanda. That's Lucas's wife. Lucas is one of the young guys who works with Marco and me in the store. Um, those are my fingers, actually. <laughs> busy showing off and uh, this was some more shots outside just general stuff you know there we are busy uh, this was where it, the way I had everything set up I had uh, all of Jay's uh, slotted cars and other cars everything that was in a was in a showcase was on this table and then a bunch of um, his 124 scale stuff and parts and uh, equipment on that table I actually I sold. The, I certainly. I love the framed boxes behind you, Dennis. Uh, the stuff on the wall. Yeah, that looks yeah. cool. Oh yeah, yeah. We have a lot of that because we, uh, you know, anything that has been that was uh, kind of uh, excess or duplicate in the um, in the museum, Scott has brought down to the store uh, to help with the with the displays in the store, and so that helps a lot. Um, you can't really see it in too many of the pictures. Maybe in some of the overhead pictures, you'll see it. Hang oh, on. I, 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 I did see what looked like the front nose of Danny Sullivan's car that had the Molson sponsorship. <coughs> the Can-Am car? No, uh, IndyCar. There it is right there. The blue IndyCar says Molson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can yeah. you do me a favor as a Canadian and make it read Molson right side up? <laughs> um. You, you can't see them really well here, but uh, you're right that Molson nose of the IndyCar is standing on top of a glass display case. And we have those all around the walls of that area of the track uh, displaying hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of cars. I think there are like 450 cars out on display at any one time. Uh, there, you know, there are 45 thousand cars in the in the store but so here you can see it there's a there's a uh, display case against that wall between the two doors there are display cases along this wall there are display cases on the left side of the picture um, and then there's a little alleyway that goes down next to the retail counter that has more display cases so that was the that was what it was right um, and uh well, well done, because, you, you know, I love that there were so many kids there. Yep. Yeah, it was great. Well, and did, did, did Dewan get there? Yes, Dewan was there. He came in, brought his daughter with him. Um, uh, he was there. Uh, he bought a fair amount of stuff off of me, uh, tried it out. Um, so, yeah, it was good. He had been in the store a, a week or so earlier. So I had met him by then, but yeah, he was there. Um, there were guys who came in from all over. There was a, a fellow flew down from Oakland uh, because he wanted to come see what there was. He spent quite a bit of money too. A, lot, and a couple of guys who came in there, not slot car people, but um, 
model car collectors looking for uh, very, very weird and esoteric stuff, um, which they can't get in die cast and, and wondered whether they could get in slot cars. Uh, but most of it was just way too esoteric even for a slot car. I was going to say, if you can't find it in die cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I mean, you know, personally, from from the my point of view, and uh, uh, in terms of getting uh, the moving stuff of Jay Henry's collection, I did very well. Of the three hundred cars that were in that collection, I have moved nearly half of them already. Um, yeah, uh, I, we've brought in oh, a very large amount of money for them so far. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, so I'm going to be continuing that sale for the rest of this week, and then I'm going to hand back whatever's left, along with this pile of notes about that high that came from the that came from from the cash sales on the day uh, over to the family. Thanks for showing those pictures. The, oh, you're the, welcome. I thought about it and put you on the spot was. Because I saw the, the the video that was posted for, on the Electric Dreams YouTube. Yeah, there have been a couple of videos. I don't know whether I've got them here. Well, uh, anybody, but anybody, yeah, they, people can look on the on the Electric Dreams video uh, YouTube videos and go from there. Yeah, not hard to find them. Uh, but I it was funny to see some faces that I recognized in there. Uh, Lee Irving was definitely in there somewhere, and of course, you know, half of the guys that raced with his group. Yeah, Lee was there. I saw him um, and a bunch of those guys. Uh, um, quite a few of the far out slot car club guys um, were there. Uh, some of the, some of my commercial racing guy, uh, friends were there as well. Guys who race, who don't race one thirty second scale at all, um, but came you know just to see what was going on and uh, dived into Jay's. Uh, spare parts and bought pinions and gears and guides and braids and all that <laughs> stuff that he had. So that was cool. It moved a lot of stuff, you know, uh, building jigs and uh, things like that. I, I love that they did that. I hope that something like that can happen near me sometime soon. Yeah, I hope that they do more of it in terms of the in terms of the swap meet side of it, uh, because but what they really did is it, it, it broadcast the, for the store itself. I think it's going to make a massive difference in terms of, and I, and I think for the hobby as well, you know, when you see how many kids were there, yeah. uh, it was, that was amazing. And, Absolutely. and most of them were having a lot of fun. It's, it's a win, 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 you know, as far mm -hmm. as you can tell, you know, if, it, if a, if an establishment has the ability to coordinate something like that, I'm sure Alan could make something like that happen at scale racing the guys at Pacific slot car raceways nearby in Edgewood here could probably do something for the 124, you know, commercial guys, you know, so they know if they're going to the Pacific slot car swap meet, it's going to be fast motors and sticky tires. And if they go to, you know, Allen's, it's going to be scale scale representations and all that kind of stuff. I, I haven't seen anything like that, you know, ever. So, so. Hopefully. Certainly not on the west on the west coast. It doesn't happen very often, and it seems like in the Midwest and uh, and uh, on the east coast uh, they have quite regular slot car swap meets. But uh, out here it doesn't happen, which is well, a pity. In the states, you know, it's like there's two or three. I mean, before the pandemic, you know, there was like one, there was like one or two in the UK that happened every year. You know, it's like okay, you know, you guys are spoiled. <laughs> All right. Dennis, is there a, is there a club operating out of that track on that circuit? Not yeah. yet, uh, because of the because of the fact that we really only got it up and running and operating right before COVID hit. Uh, there hasn't been a chance for any organised racing yet, but now that we're reopening and things are a little more relaxed here, I can see that there's going to be. Uh, for a starter, I think the Far Out Slot Car Club, which is one of those clubs that travels around from one um, from one home track to the next, they will incorporate it into their uh, into their race program. And I think that the, the <clears throat> store will start um, offering some kind of race programs as well. Is that a dry track, Dennis? Excuse me? 
Is that a dry track? Yes. Okay. It's, say, a, it's, it's a dry track, but it has magnetic braid. Okay. <clears throat> so now you, you, got the all, you got the best of all worlds. It's a flat track, so you can so you can run pretty much any scale that'll run on it. And it's right. a dry track, so it's not a it's not a sticky tires only situation. Right. You got magna braid, so you can have right. running on it. Yeah. And and on a track that size, magna braid actually is quite a nice idea. Uh, you know, I've I've driven some of my uh, cars that I run at home here uh, without magnet, uh, you know, without magna braid, and taken them there and run them still with their magnets in them. And because of the the fact that it's a deal bigger and the turns are a deal wider, um, a little bit of magnetic downforce actually makes for a very pleasant driving experience. Yeah, because magnum rate isn't isn't like steel rails. It's got pull, but not just yeah. Limp it my yeah, like my NSR Formula One car is an absolute joy to drive on that track. Uh, the way that it is, just with that one little button magnet that the NSR set. And on decent rubber types. And on decent, yeah, on good rubber. Good rubber is always important. Alan, you want to talk about good rubber? Or what else you got? Good rubber. No, I don't need to talk about rubber. Uh, I have uh, done my second and final test on my touring car that's going down to the Australian proxy. So this is uh, this is the car, the same chassis that did the recent proxies in the UK. And this is a new body. So I've been able to reduce uh, reduce the weight significantly because all of the gubbins that was inside there for a, a, a lit rally proxy isn't in the new body. So that's nice and light. It's also complete with its wing and the original wing off the other body completely failed. The, um, the chassis is an HRS2 uh, and there's some custom fabrication here. If you look at these two screws uh they see if i can get close enough you might be able to see down there that i've got adjuster screws at the bottom on the body and that allows the whole body to float and to be adjustable so the whole thing really floats quite nicely on that so this body is very very spartan very spare nothing much going on uh tested down at milton Keynes. Um, on Monday, worked really well. Tested at a London slot car on Tuesday. That worked really well as well. Um, inline scale automotor. Um, and it's been through the ultrasonic dip, which is a revelation to me. This is my new slot car tool, and maybe another time I'll talk about that. Um, stealing your wife's jewelry cleaners. I mean, everybody will be doing it, I'll tell you, if they knew, if they knew what how well the motors behaved. Um, once you've got all the gubbins out, all the, the carbon and rubbish out of them. So scale auto guide, uh, scale auto motor. Um, it's got black arrow springs on the back. So this, this all floats really nicely and testing on a wood track at Milton Keynes sort of showed that it was good. And the only thing I need to do is, it's got a little bit of a rattle problem, but that's the metal on metal from the adjusters. And I'll figure that out by putting a, uh, uh, putting some shrink wrap tube on it. Uh, so that'll be getting off to Australia, to New South Wales sometime in the next week. You've got to run know. your, sorry, you're running urethanes on that, right, Alan? Yeah, these are Ortmans. Um, and I was surprised how well Ortmans ran on the track at Milton Keynes. I would normally run an SR Reds, but the Ortmans those, ran really well. Those are new Ortmans? Uh, they are, yeah, probably only a, yeah, I mean, of, of the three types of Ortman that have been produced, they are not the one that produced the blue dust. They're the most recent incarnation. Yep. <clears throat> and, and what rims are those, Alan? They're really nice. Uh, those are actually Ninko factory rims because the body's Lightning. in Ninko. I was wondering yeah. about Ninko Lightning that you started with. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And, and that is, uh, yeah, these are Ninko rims and they seem to work right. And one of the rules of the proxy is that the wheels must be within front and rear wheels must be within uh, a millimeter diameter difference or something of each other to stop people putting tiny, tiny front wheels on that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So anyway, this is, this is ready to go. And I've learned from the last proxy when the cars I put all the effort into didn't really do that well. And the car I just did a few bits and pieces to and threw it down there did really well. So 
don't overwork it. It's a, it's a message. When, when do you um, have to have that in? Uh, I, don't, I don't have to post it for another month, but because it's going to Australia, I'd like to give the host a little more, ref, uh, a little more time. Okay. So I've got the address and that's going to go down this week, I think. All right. If, um, if you're looking thing, for your, if you're looking for urethanes for a future proxy, um, I've got some original Ortmans that uh, I can send you if you want. Oh well, I might call on you for that. Yeah, Alan, he's, not... he's he's dipping into his secret stash for you. Yeah, don't be yeah. turning that away. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say I it's really clever to use the screws, two two sets of screws. Basically, you got one in the front. Uh, pin holders, right? And then those are basically butting up against things that you've mounted to the body. It reminds me of that early scale auto chassis that just had an ass ton of screws to, to set the limits of things. That was really clever. What? How did you, did you just glue those red bits to the side there or? The NSR suspension tops. Oh, okay, they look familiar. Um, yeah, that's all they are. And if you look, the front body post there, uh, the Ninko wasn't in the position I wanted it. So I uh, put a longer body post on and uh, glued it into place and mounted it to the other body post because I wanted a two body post solution because I like the body to float that way. That seems to be the way that these things work best. So, you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that that will work. Um, yeah, hopeful. Right, uh, second bit. The, the, the recent um, thing about putting small can motors into angle winder pods or to long can pods, so it's an MX-16 motor. Uh, I've got various reasons to want to do this. Um, one of them is a, an upcoming digital. I found this on Thingiverse and gave the link to Mark Long and said, can you print this? And he said, sure. And he brought it down to the club and it just goes on there. Oh, a bit stiff. But anyway, it goes on there, and then you can mount this short can motor into a long can mount. So, for example, here's the thunder slot angle wind mount. It can go in there, and the motor is supported at both sides. Uh, because when I've seen people put short can motors in angle winder pods, they only tend to support one side. And that's okay if the if the pod is stiff, but if it's not, it can flex and bounce and you get Ninko hop. That's one thing. And the other one is, we talked the other week about motor formats and uh, putting motors into uh, which, which way they are, angle winder, side winder, end bell drive, can drive, but using this slotted pod, slotted motor mount, and then using this adapter, I can now put this motor into this motor mount and I get the can drive for a small can inline, which is not something that slot it off or anything. So that's something I'm hopeful will work. And that also allows the motor to spin clockwise, which is what I want for this motor because it runs better clockwise. Uh, and also- um, the a very useful thing, thing is, isn't it? Yeah. Quite a useful thing. This is going to be one of the cars we'll be taking up to Rockingham uh, uh, in mid July, middle of next month. Sorry, end of next end of month, month uh, to, um, to to race the Rockingham six hours of the Red Bull. Uh, our rough plan is that three three of us make up the team, and we've decided that each each of us is going to build a car, and on the practice day we'll choose one of the cars. So <laughs> we'll figure how that works. Now this is this is all okay, but of course. It's an MX-16 that I need to put in this. So this is going to work just fine. Uh, it makes the motor spin the right way. I'm going to be able to put this motor right into the Black Arrow motor mount, uh, and it will work, you know, perfectly. So that's oh, when you've got when, you, when you've got your thingy on the end of the motor, how do you get out the electrical connections? No, the, the electrical connections, the connections are on, on top. top. Oh, because good. it's an yeah, of S can, so you don't need to worry about it. And for the motor mounts that have um, have cuttings into them where they expect the tabs, this uh, 3D print has those. So if those are part of the uh, those are part of the way that this has been printed. So a useful little thing, and uh, 
great that you can just find this stuff on Thingiverse and talk to a friend and say, can you do that? I said, yes, and print it, bring it down the club. So I'm hopeful that this is, uh, this is going to be a useful little thing to do. Have you managed right, to uh, weigh that thing? Weigh this? Yeah, the adapter. How much does it weigh? A gram? I will. I mean, maybe. I what kind of printing is it, Alan? Is it a, a resin print or a, or a filament print? It's a filament print by the looks of it. I think it's a filament print, and it's the same guy that did the. Um, it's the same guy that did the SRC Capri slotted conversion chassis. I mean, can you see layers? Two grams. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So he, he must have printed that fairly dense, like maybe even solid. So there's layer lines. You can actually see layer lines. Or zip your oh, finger right. across it. Yeah, there are layer lines, yes. Okay, so then he probably printed at pretty dense because if, if that was printed at your typical, you know, two wall, 20% infill, it probably would be a gram. So if it's two grams, it's probably fairly dense, which makes sense because you want it to be probably solid, yeah. And strong, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, still lighter than the long can motor, right? <laughs> Absolutely, but, uh, you know, you can probably drill a hole or two in it. Oh, dear. Yeah, you can lighten it if you needed to. It wasn't me. I, I so. probably did it. I'm sorry. Break my bottle. I'm sorry. I didn't. Wayne, sorry. Uh, and yeah. are, you, do you, do you, are you done, Alan? I'm done. Alan? Okay. Anybody have any questions for Alan? Petrucci? Alan, your, your adapters look a bit wider than my ones. Like, like longer? Or did you they're, break? They're thicker. Did I've you got thin ones. Petrucci, did you print your own or did you get it from someone? Can you see them? Did you put, hold on? Let me remove that. I'm still on um, and hold on. Let me spotlight for Churchy. There we go. There we go. Did you print that yourself or did you get someone? No, I bought it. Bought it off of Shapeways or no, of uh, Nova, Nova, okay, American one. Long time ago, I bought quite a few of them. I, I think bought the little adapters as well for the uh. Scale electrics. Yeah, I think they're different purposes. Like, yeah. like, but these are, these are quite handy. But like I said, Alan's one is a bit thicker than that. Yeah, it's it's because you're it's because the one that you have is for a different motor pod and a different motor combination. His was specifically for S cans to long can, and what you're holding up is like the uh, S can to uh, the RX forty two, like for SCX pods and stuff like that. So, or it's one one part of a two-part adapter also there was some yeah. like that where it was there was an adapter on both ends yeah so i mean any any given motor into any given pod is going to need its own adapter oh sorry yeah the, the also the reason that this looks thick is because all of the all of the um all of the meat is on one side you know the motor and when i envisage something like this and thought we could design something from scratch. The intent was to put some of that meat on this side of the motor so that we could push the motor to the middle of the of the pod to equalize the left right balance on the car. But the problem with that is that this um, motor spindle just isn't really long enough. So, you know, unless we could get a special uh, MX-16 motor with a longer spindle, uh, then we're done really and I don't see them come with a, they are they are what they are so unfortunately the motor really is going to have to be over to the right hand side when it goes into this uh, into this uh, black arrow motor mount I'll just buy a long opinion <laughs> I, su <laughs> I suppose we could buy a longer one but then you know then you start to get into like the issues about will it stay on you know, do we then need to super glue it? And if we super glue it, then what happens when we need to change it? So, you know, in an endurance oh, race. Tough, screw them on. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, um, I've so seen different one to Berg here, is it, or a contract? Sorry, say that again. 
It's no different to your spur gear or a contra. It's just held on with a grub screw. Um, opinion on the all the time, Alan. The, the pinions uh, that we're going to be using are just push on. Plastic pinions, yeah, or or no brass pinions, but it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, then and then there's also, yeah, I'm sure there's other concerns, but isn't the, uh, you know, it's like, do you, how important is it to get that sort of closer to the center of the of the chassis, anyways? Well, you want as much as getting, getting, not as important as getting to the end of the race. That's for sure, Greg. <laughs> Always true, but it's not getting any magnetic really so so it, it fits that's getting the thunder slot board i just drop that in there uh, and you can see that that's just a, just a perfect fit that's fairly so central it's, though isn't it it's not too bad uh, i mean if you look yeah at not too bad you, you could do Couple what minutes. i would suggest is putting um a one or a two mil spacer on the screw side to move the motor, move the motor in a little bit by sort of a couple of mil, possibly. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what Alan was saying. That's what he. That's what you originally envisioned was shimming both sides. But you know, looking at this, and I've never really looked at it closely. I don't know how this is going to look on the uh, the black arrow point. But looking at this, when you consider that the stack, the armature stack, is on one side and not the other, this isn't that far off. I mean, it's going to be close enough. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, and I'm not willing to compromise reliability to be able to fix this particular issue. Having this this adapter like this and having this all solidly in place uh, is going to improve our reliability and stop the car hopping. So I'm happy with that. So with that as a solution, I think. Are you going to glue that on, Alan? Uh, Probably, well, maybe I can get two or three of these adapters, and then maybe we, if we have a spare motor, then I'll, I'll put, I'll maybe I'll glue it on. I'm not sure. But you know, you bear in mind that these endurance races, things go wrong, and we need to be able to pull the thing apart and replace it. So having, having it all glued into place is something I would do for a sprint racer, not something I would do for an endurance racer. And then there's there, there's the camp that would say that you should glue it in because if it's moving around, it's more likely to fail because of it moving around too much. <laughs> when, yeah. when, I haven't done a whole lot of proxies, but I always, I guess I've only done a couple of proxies. So screwing in the motor wasn't always an option. So if you can't screw in the motor, mm, I would glue it in just because I don't. I would agree with you for a proxy because if the motor fails and everything comes to pieces in a proxy, you're finished anyway. They're going to send you the car home. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you're doing, say, a six hour digital race, okay. the race carries on, you know, and you've just got to get that car off the track and one of the one of your team has got to try and fix it, replace what needs to be replaced. And if everything's glued into place, you know, using resin, that's all fine. But to get that redone at the side of the track in a hurry, where you're losing lap after lap after lap is it's not not a good plan. Yeah, I was I was definitely thinking proxy, not endurance. So yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Endurance needs quick quick repair options for sure. Uh, I saw Brian sharing something that he was apparently wanting to show and tell. Brian, did you have some show and tell you wanted to show and tell? I do. Give me just a second. It seems like your connection might need a little bit of help. Gifted me with. You're breaking up, Brian. That better? That any better? There we go. All right. Uh, for Father's Day, my son took me to the local hobby shop and gifted me these. It's a pair of Scale Auto Spiker C8s. Yeah. Interesting cars. Very nice by first Scale Autos. They are very, very smooth running. They are the angle wider configurations. Um, they do have, the black car here does have a distinction though. It is the first car that I ever had parts fall off of and be broken before I ever took it off the base. Wow, what? Um, on the ride home, I was kind of excited and decided I would open the case to get a closer look. Couldn't take it off the base because it was held on by screws and I didn't have a screwdriver, but one of the mirrors had fallen off and has disappeared into oblivion. 
and one of these side pieces, chrome pieces right here, also fell off the car and had to be glued back in. Uh, I've taken the mirrors off the other ones because very lightweight bodies and the mirrors weren't well attached, so I, I didn't take them apart. The other interesting thing with the black car is the mounting post on the chassis in the rear was broken. Uh, I didn't realize that until I got it home. It, uh, the top part of it, which would be like the flat washer top of the post, was actually broken off. Um, and I tried to glue it on initially, and it didn't hold. So what I ended up doing was 3D printer to the rescue. I printed a little kind of a cap for it, if you will. And it just slipped over the, uh, the top of the broken post, glued into place, and all was good. It took me about four minutes to print that. Nice. The, the cars are smooth. Um, interesting motor. I think it's 20 or 21,000. It's got a lot of torque, but it, it, they, they drive really, really nice. I don't think they're quite as fast as my uh, orange end of slotets, but they're definitely steps above, say, uh, my flies and the scales. Um, the track right now is in a I, bit I of a you. disaster mode. So, but uh, very nice. Uh, Greg, I kind of thought of you with this one. It's not quite blue and yellow. It looks to me to be a little more blue and green, but I figured it was in your wheelhouse there. Oh, yeah. I got that car. And, uh, they, they had them on sale, which um, 50, 50 bucks a piece, brand new. So Nice. Um, he had Revos on sale for 65 bucks a piece. Holy shit. And he had one other brand on sale. He just started carrying Pioneer as well. Um, I think these cars are usually about 65 a piece. So You didn't pick up a Revo? I did not. And the main reason, again, is I'm primarily a mag racer. And uh, wasn't quite ready for a Revo yet, I don't think so. And I really like these. I also like to buy my cars in pairs. And right. he didn't really have pairs of anything in the Revos. And in these, the only other ones he had, he had about six different 911s that all looked the same, but just had different numbers on them. And I kind of like the Spikers. They're, they're uh, I guess this is a Dutch car, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Someone might correct me on that. But uh, I thought they were kind of attractive looking. So they're quicker than the Porsches anyway. Yeah, I, I, I picked up, I, when I first saw the Scale Auto Spiker, before that particular livery came out, I'm like, that car looks cool. I want to get one of those cars. Fortunately, I waited long enough for them to release the blue and yellow ones. And I'm like, oh, that's a must buy. Picked one up right away. In fact, that's the car that they had, they had two of the same livery, like 93 and 94 or 92 and 93. I forget what the other number was. Uh, yeah, that yellow is close enough to yellow for me. Uh, yeah, and I, I raced that car when we raced the Scale Auto GT cars. Great car. The very, the very first Spikers uh, had the Sidewinder chassis, uh, the Sidewinder pod in that multi-screw adjustable chassis, and they mm -hmm. were pretty awful as they came out. Yeah, so I didn't that, read anything good about those, really. So I, I read that all post-purchase, so I was kind of curious because these had quite a bit of front-end bounce on them. Um, one, it has a spring-loaded guide, or should I say had a spring-loaded guide, and my track tends to be a little bit bumpy. Um, but a lot of it was so much torque on that motor that when you peg it, it just wants to lift the front end. So I did put a little little lead up up behind the guide to, to tame that a little bit. The black one's quite smooth. The blue one still has a little hop. I think it might have a maybe just a little hotter motor than the black one. Certainly drivable. I mean, they don't, they don't really hinder anything. It just looks a little bad when you come out of a corner and roll the throttle on and the front end wants to to bop up and down but in in some cases i think it's the track as much as the car it doesn't take much um i will replace the guide i i did they still have the stock ones but i did remove the springs from them um that's and, probably all you need to do you know, the only uh, other reason i could think of to replace the guide is because you're using skelectric track i assume that your guide that your lap counting is based on guide detection no no, my my lap timing is based on webcam. 
Okay, so then guides don't matter. For, for those of us out there with guide detection, the red guides tend to be IR transparent. And so you need to either put tape on them, paint them, Sharpie them, or replace them for reliable lap counting for guide guide blade detection based on infrared gates. Uh, those, yeah, those are great cars. That, and like you were saying, those are those are basically their first proper <laughs> potted chassis after their first attempt with that just way too many screws thing. And that's why we chose to race, you know, the, the early scale autos for whatever reason, probably because they were just so, there was so much to those chassis. The club didn't want to race them just yet. And then, but when they came out with that chassis, that was, that was like, okay, yeah, these are, these are good cars. Let's go ahead and race them. Uh, speaking of scale auto, the, the blue and yellow home series Merc that I showed off last week, there is, in fact, a screw holding the motor in. So confirm that. That's a good thing. Haven't done any other work to it, but at least that is com that is confirmed. There is a screw holding the motor in. Well, apparently, this chassis also, I guess there's some additional arms, outrigger type arms, that can be added to this pod. But uh, I run my pods with a very little movement in them, anyways. So I, I, I probably wouldn't bother with those. Um, I tend to run the bodies snug, but not torqued. Um, my brain somehow body float and pod movement just seems excessive to me. And I'm sure if I was tuning for competition, I might think differently. Um, to me, as long as the body's not torquing the chassis out of, out of whack, I don't mind it snug. You know, I let the pod do its thing and, uh, I leave it at that again, magnets. So I, you know, I, I don't have to be quite as finessed on my tuning as you non-mag guys do, uh, which is probably a good thing because I'd probably never complete a lap if I did. Um, but overall, very happy with them. The, it's a new experience with this, this manufacturer and this motor. Um, it is the long can, uh, but I do like the characteristics on it. It, 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 it drives really smooth. Um, it's fast without being too punchy, if that makes any sense, or is the right terminology. It's, it's just a nice, smooth... And, and I'm running basic uh, professor motor controllers. I haven't upgraded any, you know, they're the, they're still their, their diode ones that are 25 ohm Parmas and they, they drive really nice. Yeah. And if, if you're, I assume that you're still running the, the, the stock rubber that came on them, the, the scale auto one thirty second size foam rubber wheels on sport track just to hook up. Just they do. If you can keep them clean, they hook up really nice. It's uh, the rear wheels on this one are metal. The front ones, I think, may actually be three D printed, but they're plastic. I know they actually sell three D printed ones, at least through Professor Motor, and they're not quite perfectly round. I'm if I'm going to upgrade anything on that car, it would probably be the front front wheels to to metal ones just to get them a little more. And the tires are so skinny, I'm afraid to true them to try and true them. They're thin. There's not a lot of meat on there, and you know, and I true with sandpaper on a flat block. So, um, for, for when when EMSA ran those series ran those cars, what we ended up doing is putting the rear wheels onto the fronts, and then use the scale auto foam rubber wheels on the back because they come you know on the rims. So you just take the rear wheels off, move them to the front, put the new wheels with the foam rubber tires on the back. Night and day. I mean, the foam rubber okay on the scaly sport. On scaly sport, yeah. Half of our tracks are sport. Half of them are wood, and the foam rubber hooks up super, super good. You got to use the tire cleaner into the the scale auto tire cleaner to to get that outer surface uh, kind of been treated melty, whatever the, whatever you want to call it. But you put when you put the foam rubber tires on, if you don't do anything to them, they have no traction at all. So you got if you get foam rubber tires, you got to get the scale auto tire cleaner, not tire glue, but tire cleaner, and then just you know do the battery, make them spin, and just kind of skim the surface of the of the foam rubber. Because again, I ended up freaking over over cleaning my scale auto tires, and they came off the dang rims because I melted the glue that was holding them on, and Alan had to fix that for me. But you know, as long as you don't, don't overdo it, the 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 grip. I haven't raced every single type of tire in the world, obviously, but the grip that I get from a properly 
treated still out of foam rubber right up there with NSR Ultra Grips, if not better, depending on how you treat your NSR Ultra Grips. They're, they're, they, they're right up there. So if you want the best possible grip for skill extra sport, you're looking at skill auto foam rubber or NSR Ultra Grips or Super Grips or whatever. Nothing wrong with the skill, nothing wrong with the stock tires, especially with magnets. But if you're, well, been fine. if you start experimenting with less or no magnets then foam rubber all the way baby yeah the only other thing you might want to do brian on the front end of that car if you if it's finding it's a little bouncy and you you did mention that you don't think the front tires are perfectly true um if you don't want to true them i i suggest you true them but if you don't want to true them and you're running on a plastic track with magnets uh you can raise the front tires up a little tiny bit um, to take a little of the, the pressure off of the front tires. But running a tripod uh, set up on a plastic track with magnets is not such a bad idea at all. It's not great on wood, but uh, on plastic, you can get away with it. Yeah, I, I have them sitting right now to, uh, to they're barely touching. That helps. So I, like I said, I think the bounce, the nose is, tends to be a little light, and I think it's more my track than anything. I've minimized it. Um, I... I remember you saying before that you uh, you kind of thought the the screws, the bottom screws, adjustment screws on a front axle are kind of, in a lot of cases, not required. Um, and, and I tend to agree, but in this case, it it it's it's setting them up for me where I can get them to just barely touch the track, and it's definitely helped. Yeah, well, the the bottom screws on a wood track are not as important as they are on a plastic track. Right. Um, because you have two different types of setups, one with the front tires on the track, one with the front tires off the track. And especially if you um, uh, go with Greg's suggestion on a sponge tire, uh, sponge tires will compress and let the car load much more significantly on the rear end. So if that's the case, you want the front tires a little bit further off the track so they don't inhibit the compression of the rear tire. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And, I, and the black one is very smooth. It's strictly the, the blue and green one that seems to still have the hop. Now I did true the wheels. I didn't try to true the tires. Like I said, they are so thin. Um, it's I, I, I just a little hesitant to do it. And like I said, I've been able to adjust most of it out and it doesn't really seem to be, it, it seems to be more coming off a corner and, and into a straight and punching the throttle. Yeah. Um, I'll get a little hot, but I mean, it's not de-slotting. Um, so at this point, I'm just kind of letting it go. I, the, it's when I spin the front tires on the, on the, the blue and yellow one, I can, I see a little wobble. Okay. Um, so I don't know if it's the axle might be a little bent. I did roll it and didn't really notice anything. Um, it's also interesting that if I hold the car, tilt the car, hold it upside down and tilt it, to the right and spin it, it's quiet. I tilt it to the left and spin it and it makes noise. So I went in and looked at the shims to make sure things were smooth and things weren't binding and, and things there. And I really didn't see anything, but I did just a little light polishing in there and that seemed to help as well. Okay. I mean, you, you could be experiencing the tire rubbing on the inside of the fender wells. Um, that often can be the case. Um, back to the axles. Um, my bet is you do not have a bent axle. Um, my bet is that those bloody plastic wheels don't go on perfectly perfect straight and perfectly yeah. true. Uh, the tires, most of those tires, all of those tires are compression molded. So they are fairly round as they go on. So it's, it's really a wheel issue and how it goes under the axle. Um, and back to what I would do on a plastic track I would experiment with loosening the body a little bit. Um, the body does act as a resonance chamber and a vibration chamber. So if there's not a little bit of float between the, sh you don't need a ton, um, but there's a little movement between the body and chassis, you might find that'll help you out. And on a plastic track, again, with magnets, you can afford to have a little bit of rotation in the pods. So you could try uh, just loosening the pod screws a tad as well. Yeah, I've got the pod screws about a half a turn out. 
Um, and I ran the body. I did run it loose uh, initially um, a little bit. Uh, not quite, yeah, maybe half a turn. Uh, enough where there was just a tiny little bit of movement. Yep. I did check for rubbing. I can't tell that there's any just trying to do it myself, you know, off the track. I checked both front and rear. Um, I, I think it's I think it's the front wheels, like you said. They're either not going on the axle perfectly straight. I've swapped them from side to side. Um, either they're not going on perfectly straight or or it's molded a little goofy or anything. I mean, it's again, it's nothing that's keeping me from running and enjoying the car, but yep. it's one of those things when you see it, it just kind of bugs you. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, just a, real, it. a real a real cheap and cheerful test is just pull the front, leave the front wheels on, just just pull the front tires off and run a couple of laps and see what happens. Yeah, it helped. It helped. I've, I've done well, that too. Yeah. There's there's either the tire binding on the fender well or the front wheels and tires are just out around. So or there's some flashing in there somewhere, either flash molding on the on the wheel itself uh, that you can just smooth off with a model knife. Uh, or maybe there's a, a little dimple somewhere on the tire from the molding process of the tire. Yeah. Uh, very often if you turn the tire inside out, sometimes you could see that there's a little bit of mold flash or something like that inside and you just yeah. snip that off with cuticle scissors and that makes for, makes a lot of difference. Okay, because yeah. I, I did, I did, did. spin in through the wheels, you know, so there's no flashing on the wheels themselves, but I did not turn the tires inside out, so I, I will take a look at that. Yeah. Um, even with the tires off, though, the wheels off completely. I didn't even take just the tires off. I took the wheels off completely. Again, there's, it wants to lift that front end just a little bit when you punch it hard coming out of the corner. So like I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of that altogether unless I wanted to load it up with a ton of lead up front. And like I said, it's, it's, not, it's not really causing an issue driving it. So I'll do what I can to minimize it and, uh, and probably live with it. The black car doesn't do it at all. It's strictly the yellow. Well, you, you, you Maybe can... loosen up the front screw on the part a little more than the others. Yeah. Okay. You, you can also, since you run with magnets, um, Professor Motor sells these little sliver, God, 10 thou thick little dot magnets. So rather than putting a chunk of lead anywhere on the chassis, you could try one of these dot magnets up front just to hold the nose down a bit. Yeah, I've got magnets, so I, I might try that. But like I said, at this point, they're, they're smooth, they run nice, they drive nice. It's, uh, it's more of a visual bugs my brain type thing than a performance thing at this point so my brain just needs to to probably learn to live with it <laughs> well if 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 your brain's saying something's wrong the car is not fat, like there's 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 an issue yeah my brain's not known to be reliable though well <laughs> it looks like uh, dennis was showing something off does anybody else have anything they want to show and tell that i want to look for hands for before and it's all right we'll, we'll, put though, guys. About something? we'll get Pertucci in a minute dennis you go ahead and show off your little red box or whatever that was okay uh, <clears throat> uh well, maybe that way around src the latest from them is the toyota lmp car uh comes in pieces there's a whole bunch of bits inside the the box uh, right. it's a white it's a white kit um the body comes like this the interesting part about it is that it's a two-piece body and it's actually held together by two small screws just in there and there so i'm figuring that uh src probably have uh, maybe like a 2019 and a 2020 version yep. uh, where there's differences in the nose and they're just going to make a new clip for the front and screw that on. Uh, looks really nice. The, 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 the chassis is uh, pretty nice. Uh, it's starting to look a bit like Black Arrow, right? Uh, in terms of their pod uh, with the suspension, it has this little steel um, pivot up front and then uh, springs on the sides and spring or like a bounce lock Dennis, isn't it or um the original fly racer yeah very similar to that black arrow uh, quite a long um a long lead dive isn't it in the front yeah the and uh so uh, yeah that's uh, that that comes like that i've actually assembled one for a 
for a customer without painting it yet. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Um, it has a long can motor, uh, 21,000 RPM, 300 gram centimeter uh, chrono motor. Uh, the interesting thing about it is that they provide you with all of this. Uh, this is supposedly what they call the chrono kit, which is their, their competition kit. Uh, and so there's no wheel inserts in the in the kit at all. <laughs> and, and I've got onto Facebook to, to try and find out that basically they said, oh, uh, this is a racing kit and uh, we want to save weight. So we didn't give you any wheel inserts, but they did give you a windscreen wiper and they gave you mirrors and they gave you a, a two piece head uh, on the driver. So it's got a molded head with a separate helmet that glues on. Uh, but no wheel, no wheel inserts because it saves weight. So, I just forgot to put them in the kit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever. And the one thing that this kit does do that uh, is a really good thing is it has a set of instructions. Wow. It has a whole little instruction book, right? Wow with assembly instructions for the for the car for the body the whole deal so at last somebody has realized that that and the and the weird part is of course that right there on the, on the, the thing they show the wheel inserts <laughs> So yeah, they, uh, I think I need to learn some. I need to learn to speak Spanish so I can start to understand their uh, their approach to things. But uh, everything that I've seen so far shows wheel inserts on everything. <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, it looks like an interesting car uh, from uh, from what I've looked at and uh, what it looks like as it goes together. I think it might be. Uh, Performance-wise, uh, pretty nice. Uh, it's certainly different to anything that we've had so far. And um, uh, let's give it a try. Dennis, I think the instructions are for the non-racing version. That's why they show the wheel inserts. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> they, show, they, show both the, they show both the, um, the vacuum-formed interior and the regular plastic interior. They show both chassis. They show... Whatever. I mean, that's the way it is. Inserts. We don't need no stinky inserts. I do. Uh, <laughs> you, may, you may or may not get everything that's in the instructions. Yeah. Interestingly, Dennis, Jerry Skit of Ditka put out something a couple of weeks ago saying that this car will not be allowed to race in Ditka events because it's not to scale. And they said specifically oh, wow. across the front, the front of this body, it's too wide. So uh -huh. it's good that it's two piece. So hopefully that you know when SRC get to produce a new a new nose for a different model, they'll uh, they'll get it to scale. Because Gary is pretty pedantic about that kind of stuff. So if he says it's not to scale, he's probably right. So and let's let's be let's be fair to Gary. That was specifically a it might not qualify because until they actually get the model and measure it, but also the the class for which that is a reference to is a is a highly scale specific class not yeah, okay i'm thinking it's not myself, highly I've, specific it's, it's plus or minus three are Moslers that i've seen allowed to race in places and a number of all kinds of other things not, that are that nowhere have near yeah. scale class either right so it, it it's a plus or minus three millimeters on that scale it yeah plus or minus three uh, one thirty-second millimeters, not three real millimeters, right? No, three real millimeters. Then it must be pretty far off for him to even say that. Yeah. Consider anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so I just want to say, because this was an issue on other people's videos, that this became an issue on. Mm -hmm. Please, before you pass judgment on Gary for saying this may or may not be permitted, go read the rules for the class that this that that, that notification was was referring to and it wasn't a final determination it was a yeah. warning that it's possible that it might not be allowed so i don't think he's actually made that final determination yet but assuming since obviously the src is now in dennis's hands 
I'm sure Gary will be getting a hold of it soon and he'll make that final determination. But again, it's not like it's for just any old class. It's for, a, for it's, you know, it's for the class where, where scale accuracy is of, of high importance, if not utmost importance. I just so that feel that it's really nice scale, that yeah? we've gotten a bunch of, uh, well, that we're getting some new uh, modern LMP cards. I mean, they're busy mm -hmm. working on a 919 Porsche as well now. And so I think that that's great. And it looked like a good runner. It looked like they did some real good thought into the- Looks like it. There, there's already a, a, a YouTube um, review from uh, the fellow in Australia that calls himself that slot car guy. Travis? Uh, he did a he did a an unboxing and a, and a performance thing. Um, I mean, he has a he, he has a um, Carrera track that it looks like it's kind of dusty, and this thing, of course, has no magnets, and he normally runs magnets, and so on. And he unfortunately uh, assembled the whole rear axle wrong. Um, <laughs> It's interesting. Go and find the go and find the, the the video and tell me what you think afterwards. I said to the guy, "Hey, you got the axle, you got the gear the wrong way around. You got the, there's no spacers. You've got like five millimeters of sideways movement in there. It'll jam the gear up. Oh no, it, it works better this way." Okay. <laughs> is uh, is he not hard to find? Travis, Travis the slot car guy is not hard to find on YouTube. Yeah. Australian guy, and and I think you're right. I think. He strikes me as as relatively new to the hobby, so like, you know, he was reviewing the G slot. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, eh, you know, yeah. yeah it, so. G slot is so twenty, the two thousands, right? It's right. Not a, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully. Anyway. You know, yeah. And we all we all started some. We all started at the bottom, and we learned at our own rate. And I'm sure he's learning a lot, and he's sharing what he learns, which is always a good thing. Most of us started at the bottom and worked our way down from there. <laughs> Alan, do you want to chime in? No, uh, no, no, I'm fine. Sorry. I'm just getting a bit animated here about some of the things you're saying. Okay. Well, Petrucci is dying to show off his new car, so I'm going to spotlight him. And hold it up without your hand in the way. There you go. Oh, is that the scale auto? Yeah. And I picked up a couple of chassis. Ooh. I'm going to do an angle wind and an inline wind and an inline. But and, uh, unfortunately, they ain't got the, the motor pods in yet. They're sold out. So I've got to wait. So you won't yeah. be putting that together today? But I thought it would be interesting to try that out. I mean, it's a beautiful car. I'm sure, you know, if you put a proper potted chassis under it, I'm sure it'll be great. I still got to do some work on mine, but yeah, I think all it really needs is some good tires. Good tires and some truing. All there around. is a lovely motor. I mean, it's not a big motor. You know, good, good the other gear. versions that do this, the, the R1, you get the extra chassis as well. Oh, well, I didn't get an extra chassis for mine. I feel... Well, not with these. They, <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is a sidewinder, but they do the inline. If you buy what, the inline of one, the angle one, you get an extra chassis and an extra gearing. Take a look into that for mine. Uh, anybody else? They've got ten dollars anyway. Anybody else? John Underwood, go ahead, sir. Uh, firstly, um, Alan. Um, so basically, talking about these swapping plus gears. So I've got obviously these are um, long hang um, LSR mate. Um, I don't know if you can see the difference, but obviously the um, the baby king's got standard six and a half, uh, seven and a half mil um, in its half of them. But if you look at the Evo three motor, that is a screw on pinion. You can see it's about three mil longer. Yeah. So if you put a you know a mil or a two mil plate to try and get the motor in the centre to generate your mag, you know, um, yeah. Pendle does have some, but he doesn't have the complete stop, so you may have to go to Spain and get a few from there. Um, going back to Greg's lovely um, Bilstein livery um, uh, AMG, uh, and we bought the um, Sidewinder one. 
I bought the same vehicle from Kenny. You there? Yeah, I can hear you. It was kind of weird. Things were jumping all over the place. It was like, what? What's going on? Because I had it on one screen, dragged it to another, jumped back to the other. Then it was flickering. Then you were in fast motion. Then you stopped. It was, it was like, what's going on? And then I, I, I had my... Uh, I had it muted in, I, in Windows. I, it out. I had to jump out of Citrix to come back into Windows. Greg, can Brian, you mute Brian? Mute. What a day. Brian, you need to mute yourself, sorry, sorry. my friend. So as I say, that was um, an S cam. Um, and as you said, you can chop it out and actually put a socket pod in it or a scale auto or a racer pod. Um, Going back to this um, collaboration you're going to do with the um, um, Porsche. What about, I don't know if I can get it, those wheels, insert. They are the more traditional ones that I think would suit what you're trying to achieve on the Martini with it. I'll, I'll do some um, pictures of it, Greg, and um, then I'll send you a, um, I'll stick them on the forum or something like that for you. But as I say, um, if you do buy a, um, a home series, um, it has got the holes. Um, obviously, you know, a nice cutting board, or you know, you know get your um, chopping board out of the kitchen. Um, just be very careful um, with um, a Stanley knife, you know, whatever craft knife you tend to use, just put it out and then sand it. But you can get it in, it's nice, and you know, you get a bit of float on it and all that type of thing. So, as I say, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, so as I say, that was just a thought with your um, um, lovely um, Bill Steen delivery day MG. So it's like it's up to you. You can either run it as it is. As you said, try a different set of tires on it. You might it might improve it. The standard stock tires, sort of what I would call a sort of harder tire, but some ultra supers, whatever you, P60, whatever you like to use. Try them on it first. I think that's going to be a lot easier than taking it to bits and getting the knife out and possibly putting it in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I accept that that is an option, <laughs> but the likelihood of me going to that much effort when almost ne almost never is my club running something where that would be allowed yeah, would, would, would require me to buy another chassis for when we do race, the, you know, home series cars. But yeah, I mean, when I saw that chassis, I'm like, it looks like it should have a pod, but yeah. it doesn't. They've obviously done two off of the home series and the racing series, but as I say, if you're good with a craft knife, you can chop it out, get sandpaper, just to sort of make sure it can move around a bit. You know, the holes are in the right place. You've got three different options of the slotted um, eraser, obviously the scale auto uh, mount or one of the 3D things, anything pro speed or such like. Yep. for sure and you know and it i i have a fairly low bar you know as long as the car doesn't just sound like a copy grinder and jump its way around the track i'm usually a happy camper so you know we'll see what we'll see what happens when i pull the magnet out and put yeah. some put some proper tires on and you know maybe take off the high spots and, and see how it goes it might it might just be perfectly fine with me yeah i'll say it's the road um, so I, I, Sean had them on Pendle on his office page for twenty nine ninety five. I thought, well, I'll buy it because um, I, I, as I look, obviously the um, the way Sean or Nick had photographed it, I think I can probably cut that pod out. Yeah, and I thought, well, if I can't, I'll just take it to a swap meet and ask thirty five. He's going to get my money back thirty quid. <laughs> I haven't lost anything, have I? You know. I mean, worst case scenario, if you if you chop it out. And it and you can't get it to work as a proper potted chassis. You could you could go ahead and just glue back in whatever you chopped out. <laughs> Put a bunch of hot glue in there and, and tape it up. <laughs> as I say, unless you, you know, if it does go completely tits up, you know, a new chassis for one of those is what six quid. Yeah. What's it, um, eight nine dollars. You know, it's not a great deal of money, is yeah. it? Yeah, it's not like you have to toss all the running gear just to just to pop, just to use the new chassis or replace the chassis. Yeah, good ideas. Uh, and and you just reminded me of completely off topic. Uh, Big Den showed last week 
the uh, Pioneer Legends Sunoco liveries, which I immediately went and searched the entire internet for. And the only place I could find them being sold under pre-order was Armchair Racer. Does anybody, because I searched every other slot car site I know of, and the only one that had those available for pre-order, and, and I went to, um, yeah, no, Armchair Racer being the only place that actually listed them, it said that they were planning to be released early July. So I would have expected other sites to have them up for pre-order. So I'm, I'm, I'm honestly starting to wonder if they're down under exclusives. Yeah, that's that's early July 2024, Greg. <laughs> and they're just super, super early for the pre-orders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because sort of, if, if I could pre-order and get hold of some, some I could probably sell them to you and say they're moderately priced at about 200 bucks each or something like that. I'm seriously consider if I if I don't find them anywhere else to pre-order, I'll pre-order them from Armchair Racer. I have no problem with that. And they're all they're, they their pre-order policy seems fairly liberal, which I uh, always approve of. I'm I'm just surprised that that uh, what's his what's his name his name is escaping me, uh, the pioneer guy, Jules. Jules, yes. I'm just amazed that he would even that that would even be a thing for Jules to have a to have a regional exclusive for any of his cars. I I don't think it's possible, which is why it surprised me that Armchair Racer is the only place that has those listed. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking on Pandora. Obviously, Sean normally, you know, whatever he's going to get in, he um, stick on a pre-order. I'm just looking, I've just typed in legends under gen generic search, and um, there is also a few legends, um, polycar ones in there, but the Sonic ones aren't on there. Well, if anybody has they'll, the be, um, they'll end up on eBay, but as yeah. we all know, they'll probably be slightly inflated price. I guess I'll just go ahead and put in orders for, <laughs> put an order at, Slump, at Armchair Racer. I'm okay with that, yeah. I guess. It's not exactly overseas posting either, is it? So that loud. <laughs> posting from here to there, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to commiserate with the group on that one. Does anybody else have any show and tell they want to share? Topics they want to bring up? Questions they want to ask or circle back on? We've got half an hour. We've got 20 minutes left. What you got, Wayne? I'm in the search for a component and I can't find one to purchase. And I think the reason is it's discontinued and old stuff, but I just thought it worthwhile asking the group if anyone's got one and I, whether or not I can buy it from them. It's a fly racing motor. It's an FK 130 motor like this one and this one. Oh, the high speed one. Now you see, interestingly, this is electric dreams. So I thought my man might be Dennis, but when I go to the electric dreams website and still find this image, they haven't actually got one listed. So I was just wondering if anyone had got one of these. No, I doubt they'll have any there. No. I may have a I may have a couple, Wayne, um, but I'm not at home right now. So I will have a look. And if I, I when I get home, I'll have a look. If I've got one, you can have it. Well, on the forum, I am Reflex UK. And as, a, as far as it goes, I think that's the best and only way we can actually contact one another right now sorry reflex I, like i said on the slot rate on the uh slot rate slot race what's it called slot slot forum europe sfi <laughs> i am um reflex uk okay Wait, wayne why don't you uh put your address in the chat and uh hopefully chris can pick it up oh yeah an email yeah Ooh, that that's that's not so public is it i tell you what i'll i'll give you my it's chris c-h-r-i-s dot yeah. w dot w yeah at rogers r-o-g-e-r-s dot com yeah and i am at our summer i'm at the cottage for a few days so uh i will have to wait till i get i've got i i was sorting through stuff the other day i probably got three or four hundred motors sitting in boxes at home and i have no idea what's, <laughs> what's there so 
I will check, and if I have it, um, I'll be happy to send it to you. No charge. Thank well, you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And for well, all it, yes, John? Don't be don't be emailing Chris with your spam. Only. <laughs> <laughs> and and remind me in 20 minutes when we stop the recording i'll i'll go look at my spare motors see if i have one in case chris doesn't apparently john it's a small box of can yeah selling the whole car that's huh, the one that's yeah. the one well i was selling that oh i don't think you see the price one with the car around it. Quid, but, you know, what's it say you guys haven't got it i'll knock a five off it give us 20 quid you have the old car what did he have on it 25 well, you can have it for 20. Wayne? That's, that's too high. What's the whole car? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's about right. I bought one, I bought one, like, one like it, but not the same. Why do you need that motor, Wayne? Because uh, one of my categories wow. is Muddy Fly, and one of the other categories is Standy Fly. And in Muddy Fly, I can run the long can motor and i've got a car i've got two actually i've got two of those 911s that john just held up one doesn't have a motor pod and the other one does as yet i'm still in the process of preparing the one with the motor pod but the one without a motor pod is currently my fastest car around the given track of the five from the five categories and um, i'm allowed to use any standard fly motor and i just because we've been discussing the potential benefits of a short can over a long can i was keen to have a go with a short can and 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 the thingy the thingy that um alan showed us earlier and i didn't know that thingy was around and it is going to cause a problem for me to get to the uh, the wires which is why i asked the question but i was prepared to screw the motor in alone uh, and not consider not not be too concerned about the back pushing but now I've seen that thingy that Alan showed. I'm interested in perhaps adapting one of those to get to go on as well. Well, you can uh, certainly. If, I mean, if if you screw the motor in and just use a little bit, a tiny little bead of E6000 um, in the motor pod, that's that's going to hold it as well as any yeah. little adapter will. Hold yeah, that and that's what I was that's what I was planning to do. Hold that up. If Alan. I found if I found any flex in the motor pod once the motor was in. Right. Here you go. Yeah, and that you can now see why that appealed to me, but it, it, it wasn't part of the plan. The plan was to, like say, screw in and then check to see for flex, and if it needed it, I would glue in. Right. But uh, I fancy, I mean, the car's a heavy car. Uh, <clears throat> I guess around the track relatively competitively, but I'd like to try one of those smaller fly motors. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be a fly motor? Uh, yeah. Yes, because Professor Motor has that same can size as a, as a yes. uh, what he calls a, a, a Fox Ten replacement. Mm -hmm. I can uh, I can only nice use one with a, motor. I can only use one with a fly wrapper. Well, that's that's all you need then is a fly wrapper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, give yeah, it over, absolutely. Chris. Give it, give it a rest. <laughs> you know my policy on these things. I will I will check in a couple of days when I get home. And again, if I have one, uh, I'll be happy to give it to you. Well, I appreciate all your help. Thanks very much. Ready to go to the next topic. Looks Ready? like John lost a sale. <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe, uh, not. maybe not. Maybe not. It was just in my swap, um, swap meat box. You know, um, I thought, oh, I think I've got, I'm sure I've got one. Was like, there it was. Yeah. You know, if, if you want it, Wayne. You know. It's there. Okay. Greg may have one, if, Chris may have one, great. If not, push them to shove. I can, I'll see you just a moment for 20 quid and keep the rest of the body if you want. It's actually got in the wheel. Not, not a chance. Not thing. a chance, considering I've already got two of those. I might even put new braids on it. Once in time. If you can get it from John, <laughs> Wayne, you might want to do that because it's, it's it, I mean, you'll get it from John in a couple of days. It's If I put it in the post, it's going to take a couple of weeks. Well, there's no urgency on that okay. because That's we're on fine. we're on a five we're on a five week cycle with the five Whatever. classes of cars. Well, so I'll and, uh, you uh, rocking them anyway before that. You, you uh, yes, it, it didn't. Fine. It didn't. Yeah, you pr you probably will. At the moment, my teams had one withdrawal because of the date change. So, oh, wow. we're, although we've got an entry, I'm debating who to ask to join the team at the moment. Well, you can't <laughs> ask me to mother. 
three pounds. It, it sounds like a, uh, you know, a lack of urgency and a reluctance to part with any money. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah, yeah, there, there's an element of that. Don't want to spend too much, do I? No one wants to do that. Yeah, but this is the hobby, unfortunately, Wayne, where you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you got plenty of options. Options are always a good thing. Uh, and as you said, on to the next topic. Does anybody have anything they'd like to address? We've got about 10 or 15 minutes left. Mm, I could probably dig up something, but might as well just kind of let it let it be natural. If you if you need if you need another one, I've got I've got another question that I only kind of I've had some advice on the correct answer. Um, tire finishing, rear tire finishing, particularly the softer compounds, and I'm particularly interested in my N22 compound tires from Slotted. I am struggling to achieve a high polish finish. So can you give me the best methods? And I'll tell you whether or not those are things I've already tried. Hydro fluid. fluid. Yeah. <clears throat> or a dab of white spirit on a microfiber cloth. Um, either of those really won't. Okay, so here goes. Because I've been hearing so much about barbecue lighter fluid and the fact that we have had a couple of barbecues already this summer that needed the stuff, I actually purchased a bottle. I've never used it before, but I've got some of that now in a little dab bottle that I can use. So I have applied some of that to a microfiber cloth in an attempt to get a nice surface finish. But what the, what the fluid appears to do is enable the cloth to start cutting the rubber. And what I get is... a I get rolling up of beads on the surface rather than a polishing. I don't know if it's because I've used a microfiber towel. A friend of mine has said he does the same trick with lighter fluid on what he calls a dishcloth. Now, yeah, a, dish, a, dishcloth. A, dishcloth, a dishcloth in my house is a microfiber towel. It, you know, we just happen to use those dishcloths. But um, I've it's tried a piece of terry like toweling as well. Yeah. But neither one allows me to get a uh, the finish that I'm looking for. So someone else said, try going finer on your abrasives because I was finishing as far as, as far as I could with P600 wet, wet and dry. So mm. I, I've bought a sheet of 1200 wet and dry and I can confirm that that is better as a finish than, tw than 600 can achieve. And then last week after the chat, I was chatting with Mike who said, no, you need to go even further with that, Wayne. You need to go all the way to 2,000 if you want a really shiny finish. Well, no. You're not, you're not going to, you're not, no matter the grit you, you use, I've got some 12,000 grit paper. You're not going to polish rubber to a shiny finish. It will not happen. Um, do you have a tire truer? Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so you just take your wheel and put it on the tire truer and set it to rotate very, very slowly. Get a mm. Q-tip and, and wet it with the lighter fluid. And then yeah. just ap apply the Q-tip to the tire as it rotates and leave it wet. So you, you don't want to put any pressure on it. You're going to use the Q-tip as, as an applicator. Yeah. And you'll see it just looks like water. It, it will be very shiny just let the tire rotate very slowly for 10 or 15 minutes. You might have to do one or two applications, uh, but you can make your rear tires look like, like glass if you want to. Mm. Okay, yeah. so I've also got some of those eyeshadow applicators that the ladies tend to use, and I've been using those to apply. Why do you, uh, why do you it, have? <laughs> no, I don't use them. I just bought, I, I, I felt peculiar in the shop yeah, trying yeah, to buy yeah. them, to be quite honest. So I've been using the I've been using those with thin super glue to coat the fronts, and I can get a glass finish on those with the super glue on an, on on, an, on a makeup applicator. Yeah. So I might use a makeup applicator. I might use a cotton bud. I might try both. Same same thing. Under under know that the I mean you can have uh, tires that look shiny 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 like silicone. Um, after a couple of laps on the track, that all disappears. Um, it's, it's more for show than and sort of impressing your buddies than anything else. Um, Maybe if so. you look at the, the, the start of round one of any of our proxies, all the tires look like they're coated in porcelain. Um, they're so beautiful and, and shiny. <laughs> After 10 laps, they look like rubber tires. 
I, I have looked. I have noticed. And, uh, yeah, I want to be able to do it. I, I do notice that when I take the car to the track and run it, it does get better during the night. But I don't want to have to put hundreds of laps on to get them to a finish that the track likes. I'd rather take them to the track with the, the finish that the track likes already. Yep. yep. I mean, it will wear quickly. I mean, the, the, the thing that I've sort of found out is um, when I'm prepping a, a set of tires, I'll, I'll use like you just use a rag and, and put some lighter fluid on the tire. Run 20 laps, do it again. Run 20 laps, do it again. Run 20 laps, do it again. Um, and I may go through six or seven applications of that anyway. Um, lighter fluid is petroleum based. It's, a, it's oil. Um, so every time you're putting it on, a little bit seeps into the tire and, and yeah. you need a certain amount of depth penetration for the oil to soften the compound and make the tires re work really well. So even if you put a single coat of lighter fluid on and make them look very, very shiny, unfortunately you haven't put enough on to let it penetrate over time into the tire. So it'll wear off really quickly and you'll be just back to stock rubber in a big hurry. Mm. I think one of the things that, that Wayne might be doing differently is that you're, you're using the lighter fluid as the next step of the process, but you're kind of using it like you did the previous steps. Whereas when you're putting the lighter fluid on, it's just, and then you don't, you're done. Don't touch it anymore. You're just putting it on there and then letting it continue to rotate so that it's not like dripping to the bottom and staying there. It's continuing to but you're not holding your applicator on there for extended periods of time. You're just getting it wet. That's right. it. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the other thing you can do with lighter fluid, certainly when you're cutting the tires, you can use a little bit on the end of a rag and you can wipe a little bit of lighter fluid onto the surface of the tire that makes it cut a little cleaner, a little finer and speeds up the whole truing process. It definitely seems to facilitate cutting. Uh, I can use lighter fluid on a rag and round the corners with the fingertip. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's all I do to shampoo my um, wine. I, I, I say I, I use an 800 grit for truing the truck. And then I've got, just got an odd piece that I just basically put my finger just to sort of shampoo both the edges. Mm. And then um, the way I finish mine off is a bit of Zippo on a microfiber, you know, a lot of Zippo. And then yeah, a really rare, wet. Yeah. yeah, and then and leave it glassy well, looking. What you're describing when you're talking about the, when you're talking about going up to finer and finer grit, this is kind of my thing. I have a tool here, which is just a PP3 battery holder. Drop the car onto the PP3 battery, so this spins up. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that. much like what Greg does with his directly yeah, with the battery. Really, nibble with a zippo, just slap it on. It just doesn't matter. Slap it on. Uh, and then you can rub it. Yeah, got it like that. And then while it's there, once you've gone, and this happens on the axle, because tire true is all very well and good, but your final skin should be done on the axle because it gets rid of the imperfections from the wheels on the axle. And then I run it on a, uh, a carbon fibre plate. And that is the very final skin. It's not even abrasive. It's probably less abrasive than the track. And if I need more, I'll put more Zippo on it. And I'll keep working it and keep working it. And eventually, you get a really nice kind of shiny finish. I mean, that's just to but demonstrate the process, but not... I have, know, these are not I have got good. both. I have got both uh, chewing mechanisms. And I agree with you. I do do the same finish off on the flat plate. Uh, I've got... You know, I don't know what it's called. It's like a little grey box with a pair of copper terminals in it around a slot at the front and little plastic inserts that have got different grades of abrasive. And you just pop the car on there and waggle the back end left and right a little bit. I've got that and I finish I finish off with that, but I've taken to doing most of the work on an actual tyre truer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of the work should be done on a tyre truer, but I find a final skim on the axle in the car is yeah, the right way I, to do it. Yeah. 
Mm. By the way, that's a 3D print. That's another Mark Long specials. It just pops open. There's a PP3 battery in it. It's just, it saves me having to get put, my rolling. I noticed you put your car on the opposite way around. It looks like the chassis is meant to sit on that black pad. Yeah, but it does if you're running it the right way around. But for for skimming tyres, you want the wheels to run backwards. Ah, I've got you. Follow. So this, yeah. this is how you just check it. You know, if you're going to hold it like that, work on it like this. But if you if you want to um, if you want to do anything with the tires and use uh, cotton buds and things, you want it to run the other way around. So it's just just how it works. But yeah, another another little thing. I'm sure if I open this up somehow, we can see how it's working up. If I open it up, there'll be a battery in here. Didn't even open it up. But it's another little 3D thingy that's quite useful. Mark design. And has it got braids on it? You know, let me turn the light on, put my glasses on, <laughs> asking me to no, wait. I think the, are, the, are the contacts braid, uh, braid, made of braid? These yep. are braid, yeah. Yep. That's yep. neat. Some little it's holes and some screw terminals in there to pinch the braid. Just a nice little, yep. a, a nice little tool. Oh, guys, before you guys all ask, here we go, it's open up. So that, that's the kind of stuff you just chuck it together with a 3, 3D printer. And uh, just a, a nice little tool. How Sorry? How much yeah. does it weigh? Yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> Martin, you stole my thunder. And just oh, while Martin, you've got it you can... buddy. How much does it weigh? <laughs> it weighs about as much as the battery does. That's how much. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. All right, well, do you want to ask me something there? John, did you want to ask me something there, or are you? Uh, yes. Um, could, uh, so obviously, Mark's done that little battery box. He's done a chassis yeah. for a SRC uh, Capri. Yeah. And he's done that little motor mount. Did he bring these things? Yeah. The Rocky them. I'm not going to explain why, but I do know something. But I don't think it's meant to be known as general knowledge at the moment. Okay. If you could bring anything that he's done, free, that's freely related to a slot car. Yeah. Well, bring it. I mean, I'll bring this because we'll be using yeah. it. I'll bring it back because it's going to be in the car. Um, and uh, yeah, I can bring the Capri chassis just because we'll yeah. be in my box. As I said, I can't, I do know something, but I don't think it's meant to be known as common knowledge at the moment, the general populace. So <laughs> but hopefully it will benefit <laughs> most of the people in the UK and obviously other people as well. But that's all I can say at the moment, unfortunately. Fantastic. So yeah, you could have an educated guess at that. Well, well maybe no, we'll we don't have an educated guess. <laughs> or in a future Did video, we we're going to end our recording here. As always, if you can come to a live chat, please do so. And the guys will probably sit around chatting for another two or three hours knowing mm -hmm. half of these guys. But for now, we'll say goodbye, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.